click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here coming with another fantastic chemistry video and today we're going to talk about drawing all possible stereoisomers for the following molecule, assigning R and S to all chiral centers and how are each of your molecules related. So now we have an interesting molecule. We have two chiral centers. Now there's no stereochemistry drawn here, it's just straight lines. There's no wedges, there's no dashes, so there's no indication of the absolute stereochemistry. So we're going to have to draw them all. But now we need to discuss something called the 2 to the n rule, where n is the number of chiral centers. So n equals 2, one here and one here. There's two chiral centers. So the rule is 2 to the n equals the number of stereoisomers. 2 to the n equals the number of stereoisomers. So if n were 1, the possibility is you could have two stereoisomers, R and S, the enantiomers. If you have two stereocenters, you have a probability of having four stereoisomers, two sets of enantiomers, in other words. Okay? So two to the n equals two to the two equals four. So there's going to be four different drawings I have to make. Now, let's see how to do it. It's very simple. It only appears to be hard. So let's just take this molecule and redraw it. But now we're going to use some wedges. We're going to draw both groups facing up. You could draw them both facing down. It doesn't matter. Just as long as they're both facing the same direction to start with. Now, you don't have to do it this way. I prefer doing it this way because I find it easy to keep track of. There's other ways you can do it. But I think my way is best because you can easily keep track of it. Let's assign R and S real quick while we're here. One, four. Hydrogen is four two, three. So this is R. Uh, one, four, two, three. So this is S. So that one is S. Draw the mirror and then draw the mirror image. So the fluorine is coming out. The oxygen is coming out. Now, you don't have to recount this. You don't have to recount the priority groups here. If you've assigned them here and you're sure you're right, let's double check. One, two, three. That's R. One, two, three. That's S. If this is correct, then the following must also be correct. Correct. There we go. This must be R and this must be S. It's the opposite of what it was before. So the carbon bearing the oxygen was R. Now the carbon bearing the oxygen is S in the enantiomer. This is always true. If you're an enantiomer, you are a non-superimposable mirror image. And this and that's always true. And this is also true. The R and the S are inverted. So here it's R. Here it's S. Here it's S. Here it's R. The carbon bearing the fluorine is S. The carbon bearing the fluorine is R. They both have to change. R and S. S and R. Now, these are related in that they're enantiomers. Those are enantiomers, or a pair of enantiomers. Now, to do the next one, there's only two. We have to do four, right? Redraw the molecule, but now pick one chiral center, just one. Don't, don't do all of them, just do one of them. And invert it. So instead of having the OH coming up, I'm going to push the OH back. Don't worry about it. That's all you have to do. And the fluorine's coming to the front. Now, all you've done is redraw this molecule, but instead of having a wedge, we have a dash. That's it. That's all we did. But that changes the absolute stereochemistry. Here it was R, so down here it must be S. It has to be S here. Because if here it's R and you invert it, the only other choice is S. If you're not R, you must be S. R has the OH coming forward in this example. S must have it going back in this example. And this one didn't change, so it's still S. So there's my third uh, stereoisomer. Just draw the mirror image. Oops. And so now, if your S here, you must be R here. If you're S here, you must be R there. And 
And these are enantiomers. But now, this one is an enantiomer to that one, and this one is an enantiomer to this one. But how are these two related? And how are these two related? And how are these two related? And those two? These are diastereomers. Non-superimposable, not mirror images, not constitutional isomers. So the bonds aren't breaking. They're just changing position in three-dimensional space. Okay? But this and this are definitely related. They are diastereomers. So let's label them. Let's call this one A and this one B, this one C, and this one D. So A is related to C and D as a diastereomer. B is related to C and D as a diastereomer. C is related to A and B as a diastereomer. D is related to A and B as a diastereomer. That's how it works. So, enantiomers, diastereomers. That's how it goes. Okay, so that's how you draw all four stereo isomers. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're working on in your organic chemistry class. And if you could, please subscribe to my YouTube content. It really does help YouTube creators when you subscribe to our channels. It lets YouTube know we're doing a good job. And if you want, share my content with other people, other people in your class or your friends or family. Let them know that there's help for organic chemistry out there if you need it. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbets at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.